On Mars, potential lava tube cave entrances were found. Potential lava tube cave entrances were also found on the moon. These types of caves form due to volcanic activity, and there are plenty of them on Earth as well. Currently, around 1060 pits were identified on Mars. Although we can't say for sure that all of those pits lead to caves, among such a huge number of pits, there are still going to be, very likely, plenty of actual cave entrances that formed due to volcanic activity. All of those pits were neatly catalogued by NASA. The information is located in Mars Global Cave Candidate Catalog. Now, this number of around 1060 pits is a lot greater compared to the number of pits found so far on the Moon, which is 278. The pits on Mars were identified through the images provided by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that arrived on Mars in 2006, while for the Moon, the pits were identified with the images provided by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that reached the Moon in 2009. In this map of the Moon, we can see that the pits that were found are distributed all over the Moon, although still clusters were found which are densely populated with pits. Now, despite the fact that the number of pits on Mars currently found is nearly four times greater compared to the number of pits found on the Moon, the pits found on Mars so far are nearly all located in the Tharsis elevation. This plateau has a surface area similar to South America, and it is around 4 kilometers high compared to the Martian datum. The Martian datum is the zero meter reference point on Mars akin to the sea level being the zero meter reference point on Earth. This is also a topographic map. Topographic maps give great visual clarity to large features like Tharsis. This plateau has these three evenly spaced volcano shields which are all in top four of the tallest mountains on Mars. On them and around them are also a bunch of pits. Pavonis Mons is the fourth tallest mountain on Mars at about 14 kilometers. One of the pits that is located there is this 35 meter wide entrance to potentially a lava tube cave. Here is how a typical Sinuous rail looks like on Mars. Sinuous rails are quite possibly collapsed lava tube roofs. This sinuous rail is located on the slope of Pavonis Mons, so this is a possible glimpse into how the cave systems of some of those pits look like from the inside. Next, let's take a look at the third tallest mountain on Mars called Arcia Mons. It is around 17.8 kilometers above the Martian datum. A bunch of potential entrances to lava tube caves were found on this volcano. The ones in this image range between 250 to 125 meters in diameter. One of the pits called Gene, that is 175 meters in diameter, was imaged in great detail. The sharp and dark shadow reveals a deep hole it is at least 180 meters deep. Ascreus Mons is the second tallest mountain on Mars at 18.2 kilometers. These two pits were found on this mountain. The smaller pit is 180 meters in diameter, and the bigger one is 310 meters in diameter. This is how the smaller pit looks like up close. It has these dunes at the bottom. The larger pit at the bottom has these big boulders the size of a car. Next, let's take a look at a possible cave located on Olympus Mons. This is the tallest planetary mountain in the solar system at nearly 22 kilometers. At the top of Olympus Mons, there are several overlapping calderas that in total form a feature that is around 70 kilometers in diameter. At the extremely steep slopes of one of these calderas is an odd-looking formation. It is hard to say how large it exactly is in diameter, 
as it is oddly shaped, but it is safe to say that it's at least a couple of tens of meters wide. Now, out of all of the volcano mountains that were covered so far, three of them are in the Tharsis Plateau, and Olympus Mons is right next to the plateau. Considering that this region and its surroundings were quite obviously very volcanically active, it is not surprising that plenty of potential lava tube cave entrances were found here. However, there is another much smaller region that is somewhat like Tharsis, but is quite far away. I'm talking about Elysium Mons and the gradually elevated terrain that it is on. Elysium Mons is several thousands of kilometers away from Tharsis. Its tallest point is nearly 14 kilometers above the Martian datum, making it the fifth tallest mountain on Mars. Here is one pit that was found on the flank of Elysium Mons. It is around 130 meters in diameter. It was imaged with a good amount of detail, but still it's hard to say from this angle if there is an overhang that potentially leads to a cave. Here is another pit that is located on the slope of Elysium Mons. This one is 270 meters in diameter. Already this pit is larger than the vast majority of the pits found so far on the moon, and it is not even close to being the largest pit found on Mars. Overall, it really does look like the largest pits, and with that possibly caves of Mars, are significantly larger than the largest ones found on the moon, but that is not certain. One of the largest pits found on Mars so far is located in the vast, smooth, and elevated region of Tharsis but it's not on the three tall volcanoes. At nearly 500 meters in diameter, it is one of the largest pits found on Mars so far, and it is by far larger than any pit found on the moon so far. Let's take a look at another massive pit on Mars. On the more northern region of Tharsis, where there are these long linear depressions, there is also this massive pit. It is nearly 400 meters in diameter. The wall of this steep pit can be seen on one side, but the rest of the pit is very dark. In this image is a possible cave entrance that is around 30 meters in diameter. It is located right at the end of this valley. A more zoomed out view reveals that it is right at the edge of the Tharsis region and it is close to this other region which is filled with flow patterns. What is odd about this potential cave is that the entrance is not a circular pit. Most of the previously shown cave entrances are likely nearly all lava tube types of caves. However, this entrance doesn't have the typical characteristics of a lava tube, so this might be a cave that formed due to other processes. As already mentioned, the majority of the pits found so far on Mars were found in the Tharsis region. It makes sense because that region was clearly very volcanically active, so there are going to be plenty of lava tube caves. However, another large reason behind why so many pits were found there is simply because those regions were surveyed the most. The rest of the surface wasn't examined as closely. Because of that, not only are many other lava tube caves not found, but also potentially different types of caves. Mars in the past likely had a huge ocean, and that ocean also likely had at least some waves. Because of that, Mars possibly had or still has sea caves. On Earth, sea caves form along coasts through the action of water constantly hitting weak spots in cliffs. If these types of caves are present on Mars, then we can expect for them to be much harder to detect compared to lava tube caves, as these types of caves are usually on a cliff, and at those angles it is much harder for a probe from space to see the entrance. Sea caves are also usually not as long compared to other types of caves. They are typically several tens of meters long while the longest known sea cave found currently 
is in New Zealand at around 1.5 kilometers. Although that is somewhat long, it is nothing in comparison to the longest solutional cave on Earth, and that is the Mammoth Cave in United States at 686 kilometers. Solutional caves on Earth form from the action of acid in water dissolving certain types of rock. So again, since we know that Mars also likely had huge amounts of liquid water in the past, it is possible that Mars also has or had solutional caves. That is, provided that the water on Mars was acidic enough to dissolve certain types of rock that are present on Mars. Still, even if solutional caves are currently present on Mars, finding the entrances to those caves is likely going to be much more challenging compared to finding lava tube cave entrances. The entrances are frequently not all that large despite the cave systems being extremely long. Mars might also have or has had erosional caves that formed when it had flowing water. These can form in a large variety of rock. For example, we know that Mars has sandstone, and we also know that sandstone caves are present on Earth. So it's also quite possible that Mars also has sandstone caves that formed due to flowing water. Erosional caves, even if they are still present on Mars, are likely going to be hard to detect, as their entrances are frequently at angles which are hard for a probe from space to spot. Speaking of pits and caves that didn't form due to lava, let's take a look at a pit that formed in the permanent north polar ice cap of Mars. This pit is around 150 meters in diameter, at its longest. Its location nearly certainly means that this is not a lava tube type of cave, if it is a cave at all. It's likely some sort of a fracture that is just very deep. At the edge of the south polar ice cap on Mars, another pit was revealed. Although this one is not an ice, it also might be simply an impact crater. There are also these pits that are directly on the south polar ice cap. They form in the carbon dioxide layer due to sublimation. However, likely none of these lead to a cave system. Now the southern and the northern polar cap on Mars are both made out of primarily water ice, that is around a couple of kilometers thick. But they do have a thin top layer of carbon dioxide ice that is 1 meter thick on the North Pole during winter and 8 meters thick on the South Pole. Although there likely aren't any caves in the thin carbon dioxide layer, there might be caves in the hard water ice. A way that they could maybe form is through volcanic activity heating up the water ice and carving out a structure. We know that on Earth there are caves and glaciers. They form inside of ice when usually water that is melted from the top of the glacier flows to the bottom of the glacier through pits. That water carves out a cave in ice through its higher temperature over time. Glacier caves on Earth are very dynamic. They collapse frequently because of melting. In 1978, the Paradise Ice Caves was the longest recorded system of caves in a glacier in the world at 13 kilometers. The cave system was located on Mount Rainier in United States. The caves were documented in 1908, and then they seemingly disappeared by the mid-1940s. Then in 1978, the caves apparently reappeared and were measured at 13 kilometers in length. Then again, the system of caves vanished by 1990s. On Mars, however, if ice caves do exist, they are likely going to be much more stable, considering that on the poles of Mars, it is pretty consistently way below zero degrees Celsius. Currently, there is no strong evidence of caves existing in the polar ice caps of Mars. There is also no evidence of sea, solutional, and erosional caves. Although almost certainly there exist lava tube types of caves, none of the sites were inspected up close to confirm that. 
sending a rover to some of the more promising sites could be very interesting. Deeper layers of Mars could be studied then without the need for digging. The deeper layers could reveal details of Mars's history that were not previously known. On top of that, if the caves are determined to be stable, they could also then be later used as places for human habitation. Certain conditions in the caves are going to be a lot more stable compared to the surface in a lot of ways, since they are not exposed to the sun. So there is less radiation there, and also less variation in temperature. Caves are also largely shielded from Martian dust storms. Just maybe some of the caves even managed to preserve evidence of past life forms on Mars. Although at the moment there aren't any serious plans to explore these caves further with rovers, it does look like some people over at NASA are working towards making that happen. <laughs>